So here is the long-awaited, long-overdue walk around of my overland trailer I have been building since July of 2020. I purchased it from Great Lakes Overland Trailers in Sandusky, Ohio. Big shout out to my buddy Steve who built it, who runs it. I will uh, try to put a link to the, his uh, channel in the description. It is basically a big heavy steel tub. It's got 35 inch tires on it. Uh, after I purchased it from Steve, I had a friend uh, put a, um, a lid on top of the tub and strengthen up the uh, overhead frame. Uh, also had the uh, welder friend uh, expand the tongue here to give me some more uh, cargo space. The rooftop tent is uh, by Free Spirit Recreation. It is the high country model, uh, 55 inch I believe. It's uh, plenty big enough for me and possibly my dog if I can get him to climb up the ladder. I have slept in it a couple of times, albeit only in the backyard, and it was a very comfortable night's sleep. In fact, my wife slept alone that night in the bedroom and she said her night was very comfortable too, so whatever. Here is a look inside the FRS Free Spirit Recreation rooftop tent. You can see it is plenty, plenty well there, uh, ventilated. It also, it's also insulated, so I can sleep, should be able to sleep in the winter fairly well. As mentioned, here's the four outlet, the power strip, along with, with the two USB ports to power anything I could possibly need up here. It's got extra hanging compartments here for st uh, storage of things. Uh, I probably want to get a little hanging light or possibly a USB powered fan up here. That will all come in time. Everything zips up and it's quilted sides that are insulated. The tent also includes a couple of shoe bags so you can climb up the ladder and then put your dirty shoes in the bags rather than tracking dirt inside the tent. The electrical system for the trailer is all contained in this one toolbox hanging off the side of the trailer. I have a Renology uh, um, solar panel controller here, 12 volt deep cycle battery, over here I have a Ampeak 2000 watt uh, inverter, fuse box and uh, various uh, 12, volt, uh, 12 volt accessories here. I can turn the uh, Ampack on with this switch right here. The um, trailer can be recharged with this Renology 100 watt solar panel. That I simply unbolt. This is just where I carry it. I simply unbolt it from the, uh, the lid, set it up, and I plug in a couple of cables to this external port right here. And uh, it, it does a very efficient job and charges up uh, fairly well. This is the other end of the electrical system. I have two uh, 120 volt AC outlets, two USB ports, and I also have an input. AC port where I can connect to shore power and use a built-in uh, battery recharger to keep the battery as well if I'm in camp or parked in front of my garage. The circuitry is then routed up through the small piece of conduit here to its very own outlet box right here. From here we run a four port uh, AC power strip into a little side compartment of the tent. The power strip has uh, four AC outlets and two USB outlets. I have sleep apnea and I need to sleep with a CPAP machine, so this more than adequately powers the CPAP machine. I've run it through two straight nights without recharging and it has done just fine. I can also plug in my phone up there. On the sides of the tent, I have a couple of milk cartons bolted on. That's just for general, general carrying of stuff. Mostly I use it to keep some leveling blocks in it while I'm while I'm driving. On the front we have this big plastic uh, toolbox for carrying just about anything that needs to be carried. And that's anything I don't know what else to do with it. I dump it in there until I can find a better place. Here's my latest purchase. It's the Luggable Lou by Reliance out of Winnipeg, Canada. Shout out to our Canadian friends here. Very simple five gallon bucket with a sturdy seat. Uh, I will line it with uh, plastic bags along with uh, certain chemicals to keep the smells down. 
it will be set up in the uh, hanging shower system that is on my truck. You've probably seen a video of that later. I just carry it right here on the front of the trailer while I'm traveling. Obviously, I don't use it there, but we won't get into that. The tires are 35 inch Cooper Discoverer tires mounted on five lug Jeep rims. Um, the fellow who runs, my buddy Steve, who runs Great Lakes Overland Trailers, is a Jeep fella, so he does all his stuff with Jeep running gear. I may uh, convert it to six lug uh, Toyota style uh, setup with uh, tires to mat that are matching on my truck. They'll be a little bit smaller and I'll lose some ground clearance, but it'll look more uniform, looks count for me. And uh, plus I'll always have a spare out on the trail if, uh, if I get desperate. Folding down the tailgate, you now see the meat and potatoes of the whole build. My uh, kitchen uh, and storage system setup. On the left side, we have the Bouge RV camp uh, freezer refrigerator. It is held and secure by some very large uh, zip ties. It runs off of 12 volt or AC power, whichever you prefer. I've tried running it on AC power. It cools down fairly quickly and does not consume a lot of, uh, lot of power out of your battery system. We have the freezer compartment here and a uh, fridge compartment back here, or maybe it's the other way around, I don't know. The Bouge RV refrigerator freezer. Behind it is a Plano case with, uh, I'll carry all my cookware and other necessities, uh, necessities to use the kitchen. Not much in it right now, but uh, we're getting there. And now the piece de resistance is my Nomad Kitchen camp cooking system. Nomad Kitchen Company is based in Oregon. They make these really, really nice slide out camp kitchens. They're fairly inexpensive too. They only run about, a, you can catch them for like $999 when they're on sale. The stove is not included. This is a Camp Chef Everest model. I had to do a little bit of modification to make it fit in here. Had to, uh, come on, stove. I had to remove the wind wings on the side because uh, the stove wouldn't open. Plus the, uh, I had to add this little cable right here to allow the, the lid to fall back without, without falling too far back. I also have it rigged up so that instead of a usual one, pain, one pound propane bottle, I have it instead connected to a 20 pound propane bottle, which will hide back in here. I don't have the bottle yet. Where is it? But you can see the, uh, you can see the uh, ring where I will mount the propane bottle. And then it screws down with a big thumb screw to keep it from rattling around. And finally, sitting on top of the Nomad Kitchen is the 16 gallon water tank. Very simple and no frills. It is designed to be connected directly to a garden hose so I can fill it up. I also have a uh, water filter system that connects to it so that um, I can, you know, garden hose water is garden hose water so you might want to filter it a little bit before you uh, put it in. Uh, over here is a simple plastic spigot to fill the uh, sink and a little vent, vent plug I will open whenever I fill it. Here is the water filter system that I will connect to the uh, input there whenever I have to fill it up with the garden hose. Uh, just your basic simple water filter, nothing, nothing exotic, but it'll do the job. I will probably add quick connects to the ends of it also so I don't have to screw it in and, and unscrew it out every single time. This is how the trailer connects to my truck. It's using what's called a lock and roll hitch. The T-shaped part of the trailer tongue you just saw fits neatly into this little area right here. And then these little pieces fold up over top of it and are secured by a pin through the bottom. The trailer provides the up and down motion and the left and right motion. And the truck part of the hitch does your roll part of it. So you have the pitch and you Pitching y'all on the trailer, the uh, roll on the trailer hitch on the truck. Theoretically, the uh, trailer could turn completely upside down and the hitch would still say connected. We really don't want that to happen, but if it did, we'd be good. And so there you have it. 
my off-roading overlanding trailer all set to go it is pretty much complete I just need to stock it with a few things like camp cooking utility uh, utensils uh, various other small parts to, to make it all work but uh, it's pretty much ready to go and I could uh, take it camping anytime now all I need to do is find the right combination of time and good weather to uh, take it out probably take it out somewhere in the George Washington National Forest just west of here sometime just to give it a give it a try out my big plans are to take it cross country next summer and visit various sundry places and various sundry for e friends that I've met over the years online and have yet to meet in person a uh, gratuitous dog picture this is Sebastian my friend and traveling companion sometimes say hi Sebastian Sebastian doesn't talk much so I hope you enjoyed the little tour uh, if you live in my neck of the woods give me a heads up and then you can come over and I'll I'll show it to you in person